when I first saw Sullivan's Island, I had no idea what lay in store. I'd come looking for insects to add to the collection my father had left me when he died. What better place to find a rare species, I thought and a deserted island. Leave him be, Juk. Leave him be. Who are you? What do you want here? I'm just visiting for the summer. I live on the mainland with my uncle. Oh. I help him make coffins. A spider. <laughs> the spider makes coffins too. Silk coffins for its victims. I'm an authority on spiders. I'd ask you to see my collection, but you're not here. You're not seeing me. You're not seeing me, or my house, or my servant. Do you understand? We don't exist, except as figments of a boy's wild imagination. If you go back to the mainland and tell anyone you did see us, you'll regret it. You'll wish you'd been born like Jupiter, without a tongue. Now go. Get out of here. Leave people in peace! If you go back to the mainland and tell anyone you did see us, you'll regret it. I'm late, sir. I'm sorry. Dinner's at five sharp, boy. You'll have to go without. Till breakfast now. Yes, Uncle. I know. Oh, I don't mean to be hard on you. But I did promise your mother I would look after and educate you this summer. Without a father, a boy needs a firm, masculine, and moral hand. Yes, sir. Can I go now, sir? Where were you? By Sullivan's Island. Catching butterflies. 
Sullivan's Island. You went to Sullivan's Island? I didn't see anything. I don't want you going there again. You understand? God for second place, nothing there but bugs, slime. No matter what they say. Say, sir, about what? Don't answer back, boy. I'll ask the questions here. Sit down, lower your head. You missed your dinner. That doesn't excuse you from saying grace. No. Repeat after me. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of my mother and sister. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of my mother and sister. And giving me the opportunity this day. And for giving me the opportunity this day. To help them by learning my uncle's trade. To help them by learning my uncle's trade. A spider. <laughs> Spiders make coffins too. Silk coffins for their victims. I got a sailor friend says I make the best chest pie in the world. Not too sweet and not too tart. The way my mama makes it. Uh, you miss your mama, don't you? I didn't have no mama and papa. I was born in the orphan house, right here in town. Agnes, hmm? have, uh, have you ever been to Sullivan's Island? Sullivan's Island? Well, what would I want to go there for? It's spooked. Spooked? I got a sailor friend says Captain Kidd buried a treasure there. Only there's no sense looking for it. Because he put a curse on it when they hanged him. What kind of curse? Well, like anybody who handles the treasure dies. And they have found skeletons there. Well, I don't blame the old pirate. Because if I went to all the trouble to hide and bury a treasure, I wouldn't let anybody get their hands on it either. Why? You planning to take a little trip? I couldn't stop myself. All I could see was my mother's face when I made her rich with all the treasure. I know this is bad for my heart, but, but look what I found. A button from a pirate's jacket, perhaps. We're close. I know it. I told you to be back. You were spying on us. You were spying on us, weren't you? What did you hear? What did you see? I swear, nothing. Bring him back. To the hut.
Leave him here, Jupiter. Fetch us some lunch. You're lucky. We don't usually light a fire on summer. It's been chilly today. Do you ever go hungry? No? I have. For months. Sometimes for years. Strange thing, hunger. Does terrible things to your stomach. Do you mind? What's that? Behind your back. Oh, it's, it's only a bug. A bug? What kind of bug? Oh, it's just something I caught on the beach for my collection. Ah. So you're a collector too, are you? Let me see it. Scarabius hominus. Unlike any I've seen before. See how it sparkles in the firelight. Like the sun. Like gold. Where'd you get this? I was looking for a leaf to catch the bug with. Oh, wait! I have work to do! about Sullivan's Island. What was on that piece of paper? Watch what you're doing, boy. Too thick. Sorry, Uncle.
My young friend. Come in. Come in. If you could only understand how I've suffered. For years, I've dreamed of only one thing. To make good my family's debts. To redeem our ancient and noble name. And now I can. But only with your help. What do you know about Captain Kidd? He was a pirate. They say he buried Spanish gold right here on Sullivan's Island. And what if I were to tell you that's true? Here's the proof. See this skull? When I held it up to the firelight the other night, this came through. I held it closer. And before my eyes, disappeared. It looks like a goat. Not a goat. <laughs> a kid. The old pirate's signature. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm all right. You understand? Oh. Kid. Wrote a message with a special link. It becomes visible only when applied to heat. How lucky it was that the very day you found the bug, we lit the fire. I told you you were lucky. Now look at this. Still bewildered, eh? There is no cipher that can't be cracked. This is clearly a substitution code. Numbers substituted for letters. Now, which number here occurs the most? The number eight. And which letter of the English alphabet is most often used? A. E, E, then A, then O, then I, then D, and so on, etc., etc. Now we have to establish other letters. in the English language that's used most often? Jupiter, bring the boy something to eat and make it tasty. <laughs> the word most commonly used is the, which occurs here no less than seven times in the sequence semicolon four, eight. Semicolon is the T, four is the H. Well, then this must be the word tree. Excellent. I don't know yet. I've sat here all morning reading it over and over. A good glass in the bishop's hostel in Devil's Seat. 41 degrees and 13 minutes northeast and by north. Main branch. Seventh limb east side. Shoot from left eye of the death's head. A bee line from the tree through the shot 50 feet out. What is Directions. The Siemens directions. Glass is the Siemens work telescope. Yes, but what about Bishop's Hostel and the devil's seat? That's why I've summoned you. Do you see? I've gone as far as I can by myself. You must go back to Charleston and seek out what these clues mean. The mute's of no use. And who'll confide in me? <laughs> you must be my legs, my walking stick. Bishop's Hostel must be a place. It's an old hotel, an inn, hmm? some place of departure. I'll cut you in. 
for a fair share. I'm at your mercy. My fate, my family's honor depend on you entirely. Take care. And take this for good luck. And don't forget, bring back a telescope. He's our only chance. Where in heaven's name have you been? Just look at you. Come here. Now just you stand still. Have you ever heard of a place called Bishop's Hostel? It's mud all over you. Before I ever came here, my mother told me to, to be sure not to miss this place. She said it was one of the oldest places in Charleston. Well, I've lived here all my life, and I never heard of it. Maybe your uncle knows. Well, what about that sailor friend of yours? Which one? <laughs> the one who told you about Captain Kidd and the buried treasure. Oh, you mean Tattoo? Tattoo? <laughs> hey, where do you think you're going? Driver's side. I'm lo looking for someone. Yeah? Mr. Tattoo? Hey. Tattoo. You got a visitor. Mr. Tattoo? I... Agnes sent me. What do you want, boy? I'm the carpenter's nephew. Agnes said you can help me find something I'm looking for. A place. Carpenter's nephew, the one whose father just died? Yes, sir. Yankee butchers. I was with Beauregard at Sumter. And when the first shot was fired, I... <laughs> I... <coughs> yes, sir. I'm sorry, sir. This place is very old. My mother says if I find it, it could help me find some relatives, some long-lost cousins of my father's. Place? What place? Bishop's Hostel. Bishop's Hostel? Have you heard of it? Anything like it? Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? I was just teasing. There's a, there's a mess up in town here. You think maybe that's what you're looking for? Bess up? Old Charleston family. Used to own a plantation out on Sullivan's Island. Nothing but scrub and sand there now. All the Bessops is gone, too. Except for the old lady and her niece. Where were they? In the poor house.
A history, you say? For school, on Charleston's most illustrious families. Well, now, isn't that flattering? Do you hear that, Auntie? This nice boy wants to write something about us so that our name will be remembered. You've made her very happy. Her father, Colonel Bishop, defended Sullivan's Island against the British, you know. In the other war. Almost a hundred years ago. The family lived on Sullivan's Island, is that right? I spent my girlhood there. Must have been nice. Oh, it was. It was. Is Bishop's Hostel still there? A Bishop's Hostel? It must have been before your time. You don't mean Bessop's Castle, do you? Bessop's Castle. Right. Well, of course it's still there. How could it not be? It's a bluff, a pile of sand. My brother Chauncey and I used to play there all the time. You can't miss it. it it's one of the highest places on the island. Overlooking the sea. Mr. LaGuardia, it's me. What? Who is it? Who is it? Oh, my friend. Any luck? you'd cut me in for a fair share. And a fair share is half. <laughs> it, it, what does that leave for poor Jupiter if I give you half? All right. We'll split it equally in thirds. Oh, how reasonable. How very generous you are. Agreed. Well, you're in writing, in blood. You strike a hard bargain. <laughs> What'd you find out? Bishop's Hostel is a bluff. Just a high bit of sand. One of the highest places on the island overlooking the sea. I went to a tavern and a poorhouse, and I spoke to a lady who played up there when she was a young girl. Ah! It's ours. I can feel it. In my hands! <laughs> Now, you fool, I have work to do.
at last. In the bishop's hostel. In the devil's seat. What the devil is a devil's seat? You're sitting on it! Colonel Nursemaid, will you put that thing away? He's afraid my heart will go, but before I lead him to the treasure. Give me the glass, quick. Now read what it says. Okay. 41 degrees and 13 minutes northeast and by north. Northeast and by north. 41 degrees and 13 minutes. I have it. What? A tree. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Well, do you see it? Excellent. <laughs> it's here, I'm telling you, here by this tree. Up you go. Me? You don't expect me to do it, do you? You will break the branches. You're not afraid, are you? Oh, wait, wait. When you get to the skull, drop this through the left eye socket on the string. Up. Yeah, I brought the gold bug. So good luck. Get to the seventh branch. Holler. How far have you got? The sixth. line from the tree through the shot 50 feet out We dig here. Thank you. 
no use. If Jupiter can't lift it, we'll have to carry it a load at a time until it's light enough to carry back to the hut. Where do we put the loads in? Sacks, bags of some kind. We'll need at least three or four. I have to go back to the mainland. Why? You don't have enough? What use would sacks or bags be to us? You better go. So you can get back. Before sundown. <laughs> if we're not here, we'll leave you a note. Jupiter. to get away by boat and, and been washed ashore in the storm. Charleston every summer now. I spend hours diving to the bottom of the sea. It's there. I know it. I found it once. I'll find it again.
Learning Corporation of America presents the first home video release of prestigious programming from the LCA Library of Award-Winning Entertainment. Thirteen impressive programs that spark the imagination and allow a family to grow together. LCA is unsurpassed excellence in family entertainment, from children's classics to contemporary productions, with great writers, great directors, great stories, and great stars. LCA has it all. Where did you come from? I was brought special delivery by the stork. Where did you come from? Mom found me one day in a hamburger. <laughs> then where did I come from? Based on the best-selling book that makes learning about sex fun. From the difference between a man and a woman, to fertilization, to the moment of birth. They're the facts of life and language children can understand. It's a playful romp through nature that helps mom and dad explain the birds and the bees without the embarrassment. Where did I come Ooh. from? I wasn't even thinking about running away or nothing, you know, but uh, my dad once told me if I ever got caught selling pot, I'd never come home because he'd kill me. Oh, take care of all of my children. You want to be downtown? You're going to be cool. Why'd you better learn the ways of the street. Don't My father got tired of me and my sister. He told me to leave. Keep them together at the sundown. Stay from the devil's hand. I think it is very strange that older men like little girls. You gotta make them a pillow on the hard ground. Oh, I think I hit the jackpot. I've been growing up to you love that. Patty Munchkin and her team, that's the way they work the best. A street couple that are struggling to survive. They've taken to the street and made it their home. We're wise out here, man. This is their story. Nominated for an Academy Award, Streetwise. They were a family without a mother in a home without joy. Until one day, a little magic came their way. We are waiting for you at Antochini and brought their dreams to life. Makers of robots from time immemorial. Guido Fantocini at your service. I believe you're looking for something in a grandmother. She was made to order. I want a grandma who can sing songs and tell bedtime stories. Their every wish fulfilled. The only limit to what a machine can do is the limit of one's own imagination. All they had to do was turn the key with their heavenly powers. Hand me the cup. We'll send them up to be washed by the clouds and dried by the wind. And her magnetic personality. She had enough love to last a lifetime. I'll be here forever and ever. I'll always be here when you need me. Maureen Stapleton stars in the Emmy-nominated fantasy by Ray Bradbury, The Electric Grandmother. Rudyard Kipling amused himself by making up stories, just so stories. Not always true, but always fun. Very nice. Like the long and short of how the elephant got his trunk. Will you please tell me what you have for dinner? I think I'll begin with Elephant Child. Ow! The child's bad luck soon became the envy of the jungle. What have you done to your nose? I asked the crocodile in the Limpopo River what he had for dinner. And he gave me this to keep. And the crocodile was in business. Or how the whale got his throat from a crafty sailor who hated to stay for dinner. Uh... But he left a little something behind. Now the whale's dining on fish again. What do I do now? And when the first letter was written, it was for very practical reasons. You just show this picture to her, and she will give you Daddy's spear. But it was open to interpretation. <laughs> Tales of whales and others that spark the imagination. Rudyard Kipling's classic stories. It's a story of power, of those who sought it, those who got it, and how they used it. Now is the time to buy. J.P. Morgan, Henry Ford, John D. Rockefeller, and FDR. A state of law has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. These great men took America by the hand and led her into the 20th century. 
from the first automobile, through the glory days of Hollywood, to the franchise era. McDonald's took the hamburger and uh, put it on the production line, so to speak. It's history, seen through the eyes of the movers and the shakers. We either had to win this one or fail as a company. Narrated by Orson Welles. The Lions of Capitalism. Kids are on their own a lot today. Here at Safety Central, we learn to use the best survival weapon we have, our knowledge. But what should they do when a stranger comes to the door? There's a man trying to break in the front door of my apartment. I'm home alone. Perfect, Jack. Or if there's a fire in the house. Try stuffing something under the door to keep the smoke out of the room. Or a medical emergency. Have you ever cut yourself and then felt sick to your stomach or dizzy when you stood up? Well, those are symptoms of shock. Shock can be as dangerous as the injury. You may feel right, but in order to help the injured person, remain calm. Good. Practicing home safety can be fun and easy with Gary Coleman and the experts. Everyone will be happy you used your good judgment. Gary Coleman's For Safety's Sake, Home Safe Home. Something's troubling Amy. I hate the way I look. I'm not pretty. I don't have any friends. She's really thinking about killing herself? No one alive can help her, so he's got the job. I haven't driven in over 30 years. That's before you were born. No, that's when I died. Who are you? I'm Oliver, your guardian angel. And she can't believe it. This isn't happening. This is just some sort of crazy dream. But this angel's not giving up. You can't just walk off and leave me! Until he satisfies the heavenly people up above. James Earl Jones. Get only one chance. And Hermione Gingo. You have to prove yourself worthy. We'll give him his wings for giving her a whole lot more. Hallelujah! In the Emmy Award nominated Amy and the Angel. Meet Shiver, Gobble, and Snore. They're about to learn the lessons of life with a little help from their friends. Like the fisherman who needed a knife. He had a hard time trading for one. We don't need a fish! After much trouble, he knew there had to be a better way. You know... It would be a lot easier if instead of everybody trading different things, they could all use one special thing for trading. And money became the answer. When King Boris died, there was no one to take his place. Let's all be kings. And a new idea was born. We'll have an election, that's what we'll do. Now everyone has a chance to be the king of snark. For every evil under the sun, Stop, thief! There is a cure or there is none. What we need is a full-time policeman. If I become a policeman, how would I get money? All of us would help pay him money to buy the things he needs. That's how the town that had no policeman got one. Well, come with me. Then there was a king who made everyone follow his silly rules. Except me! <laughs> so Shiver, Gobble, and Snore took off to a land where there were none. How about if we made up our own rules? But when harmony became chaos, there was a need for law and order. Fables of laws and rules for all, from kings to peasants to Shiver, Gobble, and Snore. The year is 1692, Salem, Massachusetts, a time when Puritan law ruled the land and free thought was a deadly sin. My uncle has a book he keeps hidden. It tells all about witches. It's about this witch in Boston who puts spells on four young girls. She makes them to lose their speech and make sounds like animal sounds. Secret stories from a Barbados slave add fuel to the young girl's curiosity. In Barbados on some hot night, some certain hot night when there is no wind but underneath your skin you can feel yourself burning like fire no more please we'll be damned abby we'll be damned to hell and the hysteria begins they're bewitched the devil is here with us i know it tell us who torments you i see bridget bishop i see rebecca nurse now many will die before sanity is restored gospel witch I am innocent. Oh, God, help me. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. The, the devil is never more evil than when he appears oh. an angel of light. And the glory for The witches of Salem. They came in search of the American dream. Welcome.
Welcome to America. Filled with hope for a better life. Tata, I learned in American. Good luck. All right. I know green hard. <laughs> it was a personal voyage of freedom. We have good luck in America. But there would be pain. Father has had an accident at work. He has a broken hip. As well as joy. Nick. Nick. Now you know how. It was a journey that would take a lifetime. I gotta be American. The immigrant experience, the long, long journey. From one of our most gifted storytellers, Harry Allard, comes two of his most popular favorites. How about a nice story? Miss Nelson is a very nice teacher. Now settle down. Who's at odds with a not-so-nice class. I'm gonna make the biggest spitball ever. But when she mysteriously disappears, a mean teacher takes her place. There will be no story hour today. She's really the pits. Now her children want her back. Where is Miss Nelson? Never mind that. Miss Nelson is missing. Then, a rollicking tale of a lonely old man, his very old pets. Very, very old. And a fun-loving wolf. Did you advertise for a charming companion, old man? Who lifts up their spirits. He made me dance. I don't feel so old anymore. And changes their lives. We really shouldn't judge wolves by their appearance. Academy Award nominated It's So Nice to Have a Wolf Around the House. Plus, Miss Nelson is missing. Two delightful stories from the fables of Harry Allard. Put me down! The Secret of Sullivan's Island no! is about to be shattered. If you go back to the mainland and tell anyone you did see us, you'll regret it. Haunted by legends of buried treasure. Captain Kidd buried a treasure there. Only there's no sense looking for it. Because he put a curse on it when they hanged him. He knew he had to go back. For years, I've dreamed of only one thing. To make good my family's debts. To redeem our ancient and noble name. And now I can. But only with your help. Together, they would unravel the clues. Kid wrote a message with a special link. It becomes visible only when applied to heat. And face the danger. That stood between them and the fortune of their dreams. It's out there. Somewhere. The legacy of Edgar Allan Poe is brought to life in the Emmy Award winning tale of mystery and suspense, starring Anthony Michael Hall, The Gold Bug. The Brothers Grimm have fascinated children of all ages with their enchanting stories. One most remembered is that of the little girl who had a rather unpleasant trip to Grandma's house. Come here, Red Riding Hood. Take this basket of food to grandmother. But when she arrived at the house deep in the forest, grandma wasn't quite herself. But grandmother, what big teeth you have. The better to eat you up with, my dear. Soon she was rescued from the clutches of the crafty wolf and lived happily ever after. Then an evil witch takes revenge on an innocent family and turns their seven sons into seven ravens who flew away. Now their sister must find them. Can you tell me how to find my brothers, the seven ravens? Her search took her beyond the sun. Sun, oh sun, where can I find my brothers? Beyond the moon and the stars to a crystal castle where her brothers were waiting to be set free. The seven ravens and little red riding hood. The magic is still alive today in the Brothers Grimm fairy tales. LCA is here. A premier collection of award-winning entertainment. From the timeless stories you'll always remember to the critically acclaimed programs you've been waiting to see. It's quality entertainment you know you can trust. A whole new world is waiting for you with LCA.